You're not hearing me. Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> I know you can. I don't know if we can record you. <clears throat> Do you want us to hold off? We can time? hear you. It's it's louder than it ever has been. Yeah. So. There. I'll talk quieter. Is that no, better? now Is it's that gone. Good? That's yeah. good. Okay. Something to do back there. Are we good? Juniper. Are we good back there, you think? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so um, fantastic. Can we go on to item number two, um, a pre-application meeting for a subdivision on 18 Colcord Avenue? Um, somebody want to speak to yeah. that? Yes, I would. Um, maybe what I'll do is just kind of um, start us how we are doing, why we're doing this again, right? Because we had a pre-application meeting um, a little while ago. Um, there is the requirement to do a public information meeting within 30 days of having that initial pre-application meeting, or you can do it on both. You can do them at the same time. Um, it did, we did not do it initially at the same time when we did the pre-app meeting, and then we were going to do it within 30 days, and unfortunately, Jim could not make it at that time. So, unfortunately, we have to start the whole process all over. So, we're doing a pre-application meeting, uh, or the pre-application subdivision um, plan meeting right now, and then after Jim um, goes into detail on what this proposed subdivision is, um, then um, and if you have any further questions, then we'll actually open it up and have a public informational meeting for the same thing. Okay. okay. So, Sounds Jim, good. I think it's all yours. And I will say, maybe what I can just say for the public, the purpose of the pre-application review process is to provide an opportunity for the developer to explain the proposed plan. The review also allows for comments from the board that could be helpful to the developer prior to the expenditure of substantial sums of money on surveying engin and engineering. That's from the ordinance. Okay, so um, Jim Dorsky from Gartland Dorsky Engineering Surveying. I'm representing uh, Camden RXL, the owners John Rockwell, um, for the proposed Colcord Avenue subdivision, which is a subdivision uh, into three lots of what is now shown as tax map 118, lots 85 and 86. <clears throat> Although it's two tax parcels, it is contiguous land in the same ownership as the term that's used in the subdivision ordinance and statute. So it's considered one parcel in terms of subdivision law. So because it's being turned into three lots, um, it requires subdivision review. <clears throat> we aren't proposing any development at this time at all. There's a, an existing uh, building that was subject of site plan review and a recent amendment that was approved. Um, and that building will be on what's called lot one. Um, it gets all of its utilities, sewer, water, and power from Lime Rock Street. And it gets its required frontage on Lime Rock Street. The other two parcels get their frontage on Colcord Avenue. Um, you can see the configuration looks a little odd. The reason for that is so that they, both of those lots, two and three, can have the required uh, at least 200 feet of road frontage. There's a little over 400 feet on Colcord Avenue. Um, we're providing an easement over uh, proposed lot two, two proposed lot one, so that both of these parcels will be able to use um, this entrance for access so that we won't be creating an additional entrance on Colcord Avenue. Um, that's the idea behind that. Um, again, it's, it's, oh, I should also note that uh, this is in the industrial zone and there's no uh, residential uses allowed. So by default, the development of lots two and three will require coming to the planning board. So, you know, as far as uh, there were some waivers that were requested and approved the last time we did this um, for things like stormwater management uh, plans and all that, because we don't know what the development's going to be. There's no proposed development, so there wouldn't be any way to know how to, how to do that at this point. All we're doing, and the reason why uh, we're required to come before the board at this point, is we're dividing the property, but there's no development. We're just making three conforming lots that meet the local the zoning requirements for this zone um, but that's all all the improvements and the the use for um, lot one where the building is all, is already provided for okay. 
Anyone have any questions? Jim? Can, can you explain uh, the, the changes? I mean, in, in this deed, it talks about <coughs> condos. So is it currently divided as condos? No, he, there's more than one parcel in that deed. And Camden RXL in one deed got <coughs> all this land and a unit in a condominium on the other side of the road. So that's unrelated. It's in the same deed, but it's a separate parcel. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, the condominium was for this, was on this property over here. So. So if the lot across the street is the same deed, same ownership, you're actually dividing it into four lots. No, because no. if you look up the definition of a tractor parcel of land, uh, land that's separated by a road created before 1971 by someone other than the developer is considered a separate tract. Right. Yeah. I actually used that once. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? So you say you don't have any, right now you don't have any knowledge of the, the type of use that would go on those <coughs> lots, development that would happen. The, the owner's plan is to market these two lots and to keep this one and lease it. Okay. That's his plan for right now. So he has no idea who will buy that and, you know, maybe someone will want to buy <clears throat> both of them and undo that division and make it a bigger lot or something, you know, he, but we have no way of knowing what will happen there. Mm -hmm. I'm just, sort of, I guess I'm wondering what the logic of the subdividing into three lots, is it just for market value Yeah. to get more money from the, the sale? Yeah, I think just the idea that three lots are worth more than two kind of a yeah. thing. But may, not, not to everyone. I mean, like I said, someone might need more room and decide right. they want to buy both of these and come back to the planning board and do an amendment to get rid of this line. Right. And I think that's a, a good point Jim brings out. And we talked about it at the first pre-application meeting, the setback on what would be, what's that lot? Uh, this yeah, Three. Lot three. Yeah. Um, the setbacks involved there are, are quite substantial, especially from the residential lots. Right, because mm -hmm. there's a 50-foot setback for non-residential uses abutting a residential district. So there's a bigger setback on this one. And then if you look at the size line setback over there, is that 10 or is that 20? It's 25. 20, 20. 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah 20. You get about, so, what, 75 feet of usable space? Uh, I think we, I think we can't got to that. I think we figured that out the last time. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, it's, so just the thing you pointed out last time was it looks about as big as this building. So you could put a comparable building on this lot as to what's on that lot. Yeah. And, and the setbacks are for structures, so you could right. still have uh, paved oh, areas right. within the setback areas. Mm -hmm. um, so the there is wetlands. Like just so everyone that. knows, the wetlands are oh, shown right. on the plan. Um, mm -hmm. There is some significant amount of wetland up on that, on yeah. that especially on lot three. Most of the, we've done that mapping now. It's not on this plan, but we, it will be on the final plan. But uh, most of this area is wet. Mm -hmm. um, I guess for me, one question I have, and I, I'm not I'm not a planning board member, but I'm staff here, so. Um, I have concerns in um, kind of in the area, the streams that run down through like Belmont and as you go down um, to, to the harbor, um, the flows that we get in, are there, in there are pretty significant. Yep. Um, and they go through my basement too. <laughs> That's a filtering system. <laughs> Your basement to come into my basement. Right. I, was just wondering. I send rubber duckies down your way. And I just want to, I, I know we have standards in the, you know, we have standards in um, in the subdivision ordinance for stormwater. Um, but that's really, I think it really, when you start actually contemplating development and where houses are being located and where driveways are and where roads are being built. In this case, we're not doing any of that. This is just, you know, lot line. Um, and maybe, Jim, I don't know if you could touch base on it, um, what what you could do or, or they could do as part of the subdivision pl plan and approval 
to ensure that we don't have um, significantly increase off runoff runoff off the site is there a way to um, <coughs> I mean you could have a note <clears throat> I guess that refers to the site plan requirements and the fact that it's an industrial zone there's no not no uh, residential uses allowed right. so any development that happens there is going to require site plan review include which would include addressing stormwater issues mm -hmm. we could put on a, a note on the plane about that but to me right now you know all we're doing is dividing land and making the lots meet the zoning requirements this whole i mean we're showing the edge of what's kind of the actively used traveled way and gravel area but if you see these contours you can tell that this is actually the back edge of the gravel it's just kind of grown in with grass a little more yep. now Mm -hmm. And by looking at doing the boundary survey and looking at some of the older plans that Tibbetts has, I would guess it's been that way since the 50s or, yeah. or 60s. Yeah. And so, if anything, you know, I mean, this the gravel and the runoff there has been that way for a really long time. Yeah. So, but as, I guess the biggest point is right now we're not proposing to add any additional runoff. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the appropriate time to address that is when there's development that's proposed that's going to create more, either create more runoff or give you an opportunity to do some grading to, to make it go where you want it to. And that's fair. I mean, it seems like there's a greater level of protection for the town by virtue of the fact that this is in an industrial town because any development that may want to happen is going to have to come before site plan review right. and meet all the criteria in a way that if this was a residential property it wouldn't necessarily right. have that you same level know. of oversight right. Right? Right. And, and I don't see how we can ask people there's all, all they're doing is putting lines on a piece yeah. of paper they're not touching that site in terms of construction at all but we can put a note on the but, plan about that fact that it, it will seems like a, the, a note on the plan would be more respectful to in marketing it so yeah, that uh, right would be aware anybody yeah, would be aware someone's of aware yeah and just so everyone knows how what the standard reads in the in the one if if and when someone does develop on the site for for stormwater it, the standard in the ordinance adequate provi provision shall be made for surface drainage so that removal of storm waters will not I don't know what that means removal of storm waters I didn't write this um, will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on neighboring properties downstream water quality soil erosion or the public storm drain system wherever possible on-site absorption of, of runoff water shall be used to minimize discharges from the site drainage facilities shall be designed for 25 year storm frequency so I think isn't that what wetlands are for <laughs> well in this <laughs> case we could probably they, they could probably do some under drain under drain storm storm water treatment once that happens um, so I, I think we can address that in site plan review when we get to that point eventually and are there any there, there are no underground storage tanks on the property or anything like that that you know of not that I'm aware of I, I've, I've seen a bunch of old plans that Tibbetts had and there, there's not going to lead you to believe that there, there was the only thing that I've seen on old plans that's ever been here was a building that was actually back on the Coastal Opportunities property mm -hmm. because that was part of it and then they sold that lot. I off. see. But I haven't seen anything that suggests there was anything ever there. They no. And a ball field there or something, wasn't there? That's what I heard Heard yeah. that today from someone. Yeah. Um, actually. He um, a softball there. Yep. Mm -hmm. he, used to, he took all the waste out to Lincolnville and there was a, I think it's a brownfield site um, next to Dean and Hugh Gleason. So that's where all the barrels were. Okay. So it was part of the manufacturing, but it went yep. to Lincoln. And just so I, I'm not aware of any phase one environmental assessments that have yep. been done on the property. Yep. Um, one, a couple things we need to determine um, at the conclusion of the pre app meeting would be determine contour intervals for the final plan. We, I mean, we got them kind of. We got one. So before you go with that, I, do, I, do, I just wanted to ask a few more questions. Sure. That's okay. Um, has any thought, it may not be a popular opinion among all here in the room, but have you any thought for requesting a zoning change to go with a mixed use type we operation? We considered it. I don't know if. Um, I think Jeremy likes to keep it industrial, <laughs> but yeah. there, there may be, you know, some opportunity there because it's so close to the, the residential neighborhood. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've read the the um, ordinance on how zone changes work, and um, you know, anyone can really petition the select board for a zone change. Uh, a property owner can, a butters can, um, I can. Um, I, at this point, I would not recommend. I mean, the town of Camden has fairly limited commercial space. We don't have mm -hmm. any real industrial space. Mm -hmm. um, I don't envision. I, I think the industrial name. Um, and probably, I don't think we'll get heavy industry right in Camden, yeah. um, but I do think we need to keep um, properties available um, for right. co the, more commercial uh, use, heavier use. Current comprehensive plan advocate. I read through that and it advocated actually. I, I, I did this just yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and there a section in there actually contemplated um, the town, and some of you were on the board when we did the, the comp plan, there is a portion in that that talks about at this location actually contemplating um, closing the street, removing the street, mm -hmm. um, giving the street to the abutting property owners to actually make a more, um, you know, a larger development site. Um, that's in the comp plan. Um, make it more viable for industry to make it more viable as a, as a uh, develop as a we don't have commercial park in town. We don't have an industrial park in town. This is kind of it. So that's what it talks about in the comp plan that was approved by the planning board, the select board, and the voters. Um, but I don't envision that happening anytime soon. Yeah, just because, just because, you know, from, again, I do live in the neighborhood, but they, we get a lot of uh, heavy traffic down Colcord Avenue, um, you know, heavy trucks coming in. They're going to PG Willys and... Uh, down to the to the uh, recycling center and other things like that. So there's a lot of um, wear on that road. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's, there's a Is lot there of, a reason they do that? Is it a they, they close floor? Curtis Ave to the to the truck traffic? So what they're huh. coming they're coming from you know they're coming down Union Street and then they're turning right on Colcord and I'm not sure why. I guess it's because from the other side coming down Lime Rock is that hard turn. Yeah, the uh -huh. hard sharp turn. I don't know where else you would. I turn. mean. But yeah. Colcord is the, is the is now the thoroughfare for the for the big trucks, and and that 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 affects um, one, two, three, four residential properties right on you know towards the Union Street side, and then of course uh, going down Lime Rock too. There's 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 residential neighborhoods all around. That there. was some of the thinking, but behind that closing the street for so that uh, there no be no more through traffic on Colcord. But the trucks would still be able to go on it, right? I mean, depending if they only permitted access from uh, Lime right. Rock. Street I mean, that would be site plan and all that yeah. stuff. Turning <clears throat> a dead end. Yeah. Um, I guess what I, I can look at that not in. I mean, just in terms of are there things we can do at intersections? I mean, we did urban tactical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work there today, right? Um, we, we have like this. Uh, there's like a on the. Um, Camden side, the, the downtown side yeah. of, of Colcord, um, I think it's Bob Iannuzzi's place, right on the corner there's a big pothole, uh -huh. and then trucks go there and they get stuck. They turn and they cut across, they hit his yard, and then they get stuck on either ice in the winter or... Um, and so yeah. that's what I'm wondering, if maybe I can meet up with Rick Seibel over there and mm -hmm. just kind of look at it from a, just a bigger picture. Yeah. Can we do things to improve some of the turning radiuses in other locations so that we can maybe even look at not allowing truck traffic on that road? Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. saying, I yeah, yeah, I've no. never looked at yeah, it, yeah. but yeah. that's, I would think that's kind of forward thinking and we should look mm -hmm. at things like that yeah. if we can to protect neighborhoods. Yeah. Okay. Here. That's I, it I, for I'll me. work on that. All right. Do you, anything else? More questions? At what point do you want to open this up to the public? Well, do you first, want to go I think through we these ought criteria to, before first? Before we do the public, I think we should go through the, um, make sure we determine the contour intervals. We're going to do a foot. I mean, that's what they're on the plan. Um, are there any other additional submissions that you believe are required? No, I mean, we have actually been through this list once already, right. haven't we? we have. Yes. Um, we have. And, and kind of made decisions about all of the things on this list at the previous meeting. I don't think everyone was here at the previous meeting, though, right? Matt, were you here at the first meeting? Okay. You I was. I think you have to act as if that meeting didn't okay. happen. Okay. All right. Okay. So, all right. Let's go through it then. <coughs> Are the contour intervals for the final plan? Do we see those on there? Yep. And they're yes. one point. Okay. Do we, do we think any more additional submissions should be required? No. 
know? Uh, well, how about, my, how about that uh, document that's going to have the wetlands on it? That, that's going to be submitted to us. Up on the final plan. Okay. So okay. we're going to need to ask for it now. So, so long as it's on the final yeah, plan. Right. Okay. Um, and then the next one would be um, about the site walk. And what we ought to do is we should just, in my opinion, um, accept the minutes that we had all approved as the minutes of the site walk. And that would suffice for the site walk. Does anyone have any issues with that? No, I think we're all there at the site walk. Okay. Do we need an outside consultant to advise us for this project? No. 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 Okay. <coughs> Um, do we, so do we need a public hearing over and beyond, do we need a public hearing, does anybody feel? You can make feel? that call, I think the last time you said you didn't, we didn't feel it was necessary, but I, I, uh, from I the recall public, yes, uh, but one of these meetings here seeing half a dozen people from the public in the audience. They, they received. We'll public informational meeting tonight, and that's what you decided before, because you were going to have that. That, exactly right. Yeah, I mean, does that, I mean, is that going to be, that effectively serves the same purpose as a public hearing? No, no, butters all received notice. Correct. Okay. Certified mail. So. And the meetings are all also open to the public. It just, okay. and we'll take comment from the public too. It's just not a pub, formal public hearing that has to be noticed like normal. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with that? You want to on the board? Uh, vote on that, I think, Okay, does that make a motion that we don't need a separate public hearing for this project? Anybody going to second that? No. no. Would some no. of you like to have I a public hearing? I think you said hearing? a second public hearing. Uh, you mean something? Be a second for, do oh, I have somebody who's willing go. to second that? There you go. So just are, are we considered, th this is the public hearing. We're considering this. It's a public, public informational hearing. meeting, not a public hearing. It has been noticed Correct. just the same just as the a same. public hearing would have been. So that means uh, neighbors, will they be getting another notice to come? If you held another hearing, yes, <laughs> they would probably get another notice. Um, but everybody, everybody who might have some interest or concern about this project who's in a butter has been noted. And yes. they have the opportunity to be here tonight. Yes. And we're going to have the opportunity to hear from them. Yes. Tonight. Tonight. Yes. Okay. Is, did, does, is, can we decide on the public hearing after we've heard from the public about whether we need a separate one? I think that's fair. We could do that if you like. Reasonable thing to do. I, I would feel comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's hard for us to make that determination before we know. Sure. Okay. Yeah. What people's issues are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to withdraw your motion then? I guess I'm withdrawing the motion, yes, for right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Good. Any requests for waivers? That's not applicable. They're here. Yeah, no, there are. Okay. okay. Last page of your packet. Back on the very last page of your new packet. Probably... Nope, mm -hmm. it's on These this one. So, stormwater was one issue because they didn't know what was going to be constructed okay. or developed on okay. the property. Uh, the utilities, is that for the same reason, Jim? Right. All those are for the same reason. Right. So, you want to go through these one by one? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so submission requirements that are requesting to be made. Waived. Waived, sorry. A performance guarantee meeting the requirements of Article 10. I propose we waive that uh, based on the fact that there will be no, no building. Okay. No proposed no, building. No proposed building at this point. Yeah. Okay. It's just a division of property lines. No building, no roads, building nothing. No right. infrastructure. Right. No infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All those in favor? Say aye. So aye, that's aye. five, aye. zero in favor of 
first one. So Appendix B, 4E, a stormwater plan showing ditches, culverts, catch basins, detention or retention areas. Do we think that we should give them a waiver for that? I would... I would suggest that we make a notation on the plan that it should be uh, it should be brought up with any development on this project, any further development on this project, just so it's not, That's not a lost. I've already got that down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be I get it on the record too. Yeah. Is good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We would be waiving the requirement to show all those things. Right, on but this you're plan. Just making yes. a request that the final plan have a note that uh, identifies the fact that because of this zoning and development on these properties will require site plan so, review and will require, I've got a note to myself to look at the site plan review ordinance and quote something out of that about storm stormwater. Mm -hmm. So that'll all be on, on the final plan. Very so anybody who wants to go out and see that and know that they're going to be subject to that. So to, to reword my motion <laughs> is, is we would... Um, Waive uh, the stormwater plan on this proposed subdivision with the understanding that any further construction or development, uh, the stormwater plan be addressed. Would that be a note to the yeah, understanding? That there would be a note that, yeah. that would be noted. That. On the plan. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, Jeannie? You got all that. I will second Magic. that. Okay, all those in favor? Absolutely. Aye. Say aye. aye. So aye. five, zero in favor. Okay, um, and the last one, Appendix B4F, the location of all proposed utilities, including electrical, cable, water, and sewer. So we're comfortable we we waving those. Yeah, we don't have any buildings planned, so I guess it... Well, no utilities plan. proposed, so... And do you have existing utilities shown on the plan? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So we're kind of waiving that because there aren't any proposed utilities. It's not applicable. Right. 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 So I'm making a, a, a proposal that we make a waiver for the plan having to show the location of all proposed utilities, given that there are none. Second. Second. Yeah. Right. All those yeah. in favour? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So five zero. Aye. Okay. Who's the second? I'm sorry. Ethan. I was just a step ahead. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so we've 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 waived all those submission yep. requirements. <clears throat> and dotted our I's and crossed our T's. Okay. So I think the final thing we have to do here is discuss any issues related to the approval criteria that the applicant should consider in preparing the final plan. <laughs> certainly had a couple of requests made of you that you've agreed to put on there. Is there anything in addition? I don't think so. That the board would like to see on the final plan? Or is there anything that hasn't been addressed? Not in addition. So, so you, you agreed wetlands will be on mm -hmm. the final plan? Yeah. And the notes. And, and the notations we've made. Probably. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing nods. Okay. No, that's Okay. I mean, keep in mind in 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 the approval standards when it talks about wetlands, it does say they have to be shown on that final approved plan. So, I mean, I, I think Jim's got that under under yep. control. So. Already got them on the plans, just not yeah. on this one. Yeah. It's a line weight issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we open up the meeting to? Members of the public at this point, would that be an appropriate time to do so? I think that's perfect. Um, and just so everyone knows, I'll just get this out there because people may be listening and what the, what the public informational meeting is for. Um, it, the public informational meeting shall be held following the initial presentation by the developer and shall be held the same night or within 30 days at the option of the developer. The meeting provides an opportunity to explain the project to abutters and to answer questions outside the formal review process. The meeting may produce useful information for the developer through local knowledge and may provide an opportunity to address issues and concerns prior to formal planning board review. 
notice um, needs to be sent um, by certified mail to abutting property owners, um, and we did do that. Okay. okay. Shall I read the read the blurb? I need to read the. Uh, not for, that's a public hearing, hearing so that. this Doesn't, is not a not public hearing. It's not relevant. Okay. Okay. Um, totally. And we can just, I think, um, maybe start taking um, comment from the public. Um, I think. Um, Jim um, clearly detailed what this proposal is. I, I'm not sure he needs to regurgitate that for the public that may be here. If the public wants him to, they can. Um, but I, I guess I'll maybe step aside and let um, some folks from the public, if they we want, want to come. We want people to sign in and Yep, we'll, we'll get their, their name and all that. Yeah, yep. okay. Yep. All right, okay. Thank you, yep. gentlemen. So at this point, we're opening up the public information meeting. Is there anybody from the public who'd like to come up and speak? Um, now, now's your chance. <laughs> Have you seen this plan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Can, Again, if you've got anything to say, we'd really like you to be here and talking to us. And we'll take your name. And Lisa Burgess. Are you Lisa Burgess? Yes, I am. Okay, I will write you. <laughs> Have a seat. She's a done for you. owner of Frank. He needs. Oh. <laughs> Brave man. Come on now. You wouldn't ever dare to question Jeannie. <laughs> Did you just question Jeannie? <laughs> yes, she. Yes. Shame on you, Jeremy. Chuck. <laughs> yeah, my name is Lisa Burgess, and I am from Rankins, one of the abutters. And, um,. I guess my only concern is I know we have one building that's over the line a little bit that they found, uh, three feet. Mm -hmm. um, the building's been there since the 60s. Um, I don't know what you do in that case, but um, that's, only, that's my only concern right now. I know there's a lot of wetlands there because I know there's a stream right near where our <laughs> property is. So. Um, you saying one of your buildings yes. is over this property line? Yes. And you're concerned that somebody who buys a property might have an issue with it? Is, um, that, is that the... I, I, I don't know do okay. whether they will or not. Speak to yes. Yes. Yeah, please I, I do. I met with Lisa yes. actually already. That's <laughs> Great. why she's seen the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the whole reason why we're doing this over again... <laughs> is because we finished the boundary survey right after we had the pre-app meeting and the site walk. And when we finished it, we did discover that the one of their buildings was, it's not even, I think we proposed moving the line two feet. So I don't remember how much it's over, something but it might like be that. a foot or a half a foot or something. Yeah. Uh, there's one building that runs parallel to this line. Um, there's also an encroachment here by Coastal Opportunities with their pavement that comes over a little bit, but they're both really small amounts. So I talked to John Rockwell about it, and what we decided to do is do boundary line agreements and just shift the line over so that there's no encroachment anymore, basically. That's nice. So, and then that's what we're going to do with her. The, I, I was going to ask you when I saw you <laughs> if, what, if you knew what was going on because um, – for one thing, right after that happened, I went on vacation, and then John's lawyer went on vacation right after that, so things got delayed. And then John said, I think I'm just going to hold off on this till fall, which is when I called Jeannie and said, we're not going to come to that next meeting. And I forgot about the whole thing with the public informational meeting and how it had to happen within 30 yeah. days or you've got to start over. Or I hadn't even thought about that fact. So that's why I didn't come to the last meeting, because we thought we were waiting till fall to go ahead with this. Um, but then he decided, well, let's just go ahead and do it. So I wrote descriptions, and we've got a plan ready to do those agreements. Okay. But, um, and I sent them to his attorney, but I called her today to find out where that's at to try to figure out when we're going to want to go to final plan, and uh, didn't hear back from her. But... I'm guessing we won't be ready until at least, she gave me the impression that I think those are just about done and ready mm -hmm. to be signed. I showed that those proposed mm -hmm. lines to Lisa and to the executive director of Coastal Opportunities and everybody's okay with it. Mm -hmm. so, the, so 
there's different ways of dealing with that and whether or not it would be approved with an encroachment. I just didn't even want to go there. I told him, let's get this straightened out so there are no encroachments. We'll get the boundary line agreements done, signed, recorded in the registry of deeds. Then we'll have a final boundary survey that shows the agreed two lines and references the, the, deed, the boundary line agreement deeds and there won't be any issues <laughs> like that. So by the time we come to final, that'll be resolved and we won't come to final until it is. So. Okay. Should that have been that's something great, that we put in? That's a great waiver. solution, and I that's appreciate fine. the owner yeah. doing that. I yeah. mean, that's a great way to deal with it. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's really <clears throat> tiny amounts. It's right. not going to yeah. have any effect on the It doesn't really affect us. So I, yeah, right. I, I don't know if that affects us as a planning yeah. board. I right. think it just it's between you, yeah. and it yeah. makes it easier to sell the property right. without right. Right. encroachment. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the way it should get taken care of. <laughs> That's great. That's the way it should be, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I mean, for Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> Any more? No, I'm just okay. interested because I got, got a letter and I appreciate it. Sure. It's really entertaining. Some people watch us on TV just for fun with that. Kind of. <laughs> leave, leave to the one viewer. Yeah, Alison. Hi, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick, Rick Rock. <laughs> I know who watches us. Uh, All right. Oh, Fantastic. Funny. All right. That's good. I think we can um, probably close this public informational meeting. Okay. Um, and I don't think we have any any anything else for. I don't, do for I need, we don't need to make I a think, motion to close it, do we? Or do we? The pre-application, you can do that if we you want. Maybe. Motions. motions to, Just the <coughs> date of the next. Oh, well, yeah. The that, final we need review. to figure out the so, review. You are scheduled for your next regularly scheduled meeting would be two weeks from the twenty. What's the twentieth? Twentieth. Yeah. That does not work for Jim. Or, right. We're right. not going to have those agreements done by then, I don't believe. Right. And it didn't sound like the 27th either. Right. Because um, we have to submit two weeks ahead. Right. This, then it would be July 4th. Which we're not going to do. It's not going to work yeah. for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but the planning board is not showing up on July 4th. July 18th, 18th. would be. Yeah. Okay. Is that, okay, that's, that's doable. 11. Yeah, I didn't like July 11th. Does that create the same timing issue? That I think it's be the first one. Well, we, we would have to submit by July 3rd, I guess. Right. <clears throat> yeah, the 15 days. That way you can enjoy your holiday because you'll already be done with your work. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And so July 18th will be the final approval. Yeah, subdivision plan. So. Yeah. Mark brought up an interesting point, though. Maybe we should check to see if there's a deadline for submission. Jim, are you aware of any off the top of your head in our... Um, I'm pretty sure it's two weeks. I remember that it was 21 it's, days for pre -act. Well, It's 15 days for submission. But do you have to, do, do you have to act on oh, it within a certain a, number of days from... Approval of the, of the pre app pre Yeah. And I don't know off the top of my head. It's minor subdivision. I've lost my page. You've lost your page. Which page number? It's um, Article 5 in the subdivision ordinance, and Article I took it out to copy it. And Submitted five days prior. Plan we're meeting. We wish to be heard. They do. Take I don't months. see any anything in here that just talks about. To it. I don't see anything, in, and this is just page 15 of the subdivision um, plan review, Article 5, minor subdivision final plan review. Um, there's nothing in there except about the 15 days prior to the planning board meeting that he needs to submit. So it's about making sure we have enough time to review it before it comes. Right, a month. That's. I think we're good that there. Harm. I think we're good there. Does that mean that that's our next planning board meeting, or does it just mean that nothing else has come that needs to be dealt with yet? Well, nothing that is, needs to be dealt with. I actually am um, <coughs> have family in from out of town and taking the week of that 20th off. 
So um, I'm not going to be here. June 20th. June 20th. Okay. Um, you guys are more than welcome to meet with Jeannie's expert I guidance. I don't know what we'd do without you. Um, I'm sure you could do a lot. <laughs> Anybody have any ordinances they want to ride? <laughs> I mean, there is some it's talk. time. You know, it's our chance. Oh, let's come fly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Just when are you going to like have us back here next? That's. Um, I mean, there are some things I'd like to. I mean, I still got to start working on, and I haven't unfortunately been able to do it. Um, spend some time on the dwelling units in the downtown zones on the lot size that we had talked about prior. Um, <coughs> That's on for tonight, right? No, we're not doing it tonight. I'm sorry. But that was on the list for tonight. Yeah, it was on the list. Number four. But it's. I, yeah, I. Okay. I'm not prepared to do that today. Everybody thinks you're working too hard anyway, so I think it's good. You can... um, and lighting ordinance, um, I will say that but... some of um, are interested in us looking at, having a, at a, looking at our lighting standards. And we'd hashed out a basic draft. We did. Right? Yes. Do we want to bring that to everybody to, to review? Is maybe, that the next stage? Do you want to maybe just try to have a meeting amongst yourselves and talk about lighting on the 20th? Did you get to the point where there is an actual draft? I, I have a draft done on lighting. Um, Jeremy has it. Yeah. I mean, un unless it can get sent out to everybody on the board to review at home. Yeah. I mean, if there's not a huge amount of comment. I'm always willing to show up for a meeting, right? That's time's blocked out. But if there's no reason to have a meeting, I'm on. The, there's no reason to have. If a there's meeting. no good okay, reason to have fair. a meeting, then let's, then, let's, let's say we're not going to have a meeting on June 20th unless something comes up right. in the meantime right. that needs to be heard on the 20th. Okay. Which and you'll let for, us know. For I mean, Rockport fans, it's uh, Rick Bates's retirement party. So on June 20th. On the 20th. So I just am not having a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Isn't that when Jeff in June is on as well? When's that? All right. Listen to Jeff so to right now we're, we'll just plan for July. Um, what was it? 18th. 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 July 18th. Potentially that's, that's our next like meeting. Vacation. So that's yeah, you got a big long vacation. You got a month long vacation from this. So unless something comes up, yeah. Unless something comes up, I will have some. Uh, that'll give me time to at least maybe we can talk about lighting at that meeting and review a draft um, and then also maybe review some lot size dwelling units in the downtown uh, yeah. for, for that. Just as an information, who, who else in town is uh, getting involved in lighting now? No one. Um, it's just the planning board. Uh, the Energy Committee um, had talked about it um, and they are talked about it. Are the ones behind it. this new street light? They are. Um, they are. Um, but street lighting is different from our lighting standards um, in our okay. site plan or zoning ordinance. Um, mm -hmm. They tried to, at the select board meeting the other night, they tried to bring lighting up and they wanted uh, to be involved in that and they were directed that lighting standards in the zoning ordinance is not an energy committee issue mm -hmm. and that the planning board and, and I will be working on that and not the energy committee. Okay. Okay. They they're welcome to attend. Yes, and I invited them to attend <coughs> and all that and I'm sure there a couple of them will attend. Yeah. But it's not a energy committee issue. Okay. Yeah. It's a zoning a zoning and land use issue. So do we on, on on the day when we actually discuss that, do we want to have that open to the public? Um, all of our meetings are, you know, we do we, can, do we need to send something out so the relevant people who might want to come no, in? Uh, those relevant people will be well aware of the meeting. I They'll will, know that we're having I'll the meeting and we'll show up. I will let them know. Again, I'd rather have people who have an interest show up Correct. and tell us what they think yep. at the time. Yep. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And there are a couple of people from the Energy Committee who will likely be here for that. So, be, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to, to back up on, on the other question we had here and determining a, a determination regarding a public hearing. Um, we're not going to have another public hearing. We're just going to have the final hearing for this subdivision on correct. July 18th. On July 18th, correct. Okay, just to clarify all that. Yep. So do you so now we get all the agreement stuff taken care of by July 3rd, and I can submit everything. Correct. It may be then out in the. It goes August. out further. It yeah. would go out further if we don't. I would think we would, but. 
Lawyers. Is that yeah. something we need <laughs> as a planning board? What's that? The, the uh, corrected date? Uh, well, we're going to have to. Yeah, I mean, gonna you're not going to finalize a plan that until that boundary oh, is changed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now do you want to vote that you determine not to hold a public hearing? Okay. Right, and that's what we were going to do okay. after we heard from the public. No public is one of the reasons for... that it gives you to hold one is the degree of public interest. So. All right, so I make a motion. No, you can make the motion. Go on, you're the legal guy. No, 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 yeah, no. You shot me down last time. It's your turn. <laughs> uh, I move that the um, informational hearing serve as the public hearing, and therefore, no need for a formal public hearing on this application. Uh, yeah, and I would say it wasn't a public inform public information hearing session. that this yeah, yeah public information public session information suffices session. to get public input. To get public input. I'll second that. <laughs> Some <laughs> nice. <laughs> All those in favor? Um, there was there has been interest on this uh, on this project, Hesner, based on uh, one meeting that was here, that I, I saw several people, some of whom I know. Yeah, and what, what have you heard from them? Anything? We um, the gen one gentleman, and I don't know his name. He was in the office actually yesterday. Um, built a new property. Yes. In the renovated that house, right? That's not a new one that he ren renovated, I believe. No, it's no. not. That was a new. That was a that was a vacant lot. Okay, yeah. fair. Sorry, sorry. You guys have been here longer than me. Um, Yes, yeah, so he's well aware of this meeting tonight. He was in here yesterday uh -huh. um, and talked with, with Jeannie about this. So he, he knew it was today. Okay. Um, and I think, his, um, I think his issue is really not so much about the subdivision mm -hmm. plan. It's about the uses and the zoning of the right property. Down the road. So yeah, I, and I, I, my gut says is that's why he's probably not here, because this is really a subdivision of just creating <laughs> You know, putting two lot lines on one lot um, to make three, and not really about uses that are coming, uses that are contemplated. Um, it's his. I think his concern is the zoning of that area. Mm -hmm. um, is the case that these can be fairly easily undone? Excuse me. This can be undone. What can be undone? Like the line, the lots can be merged again if they can be merged yeah, again. Easily. I mean, if someone wants to buy the whole parcel. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think you know. I don't know where you're at. You're comfortable with it? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like everybody's been given good notice. Yeah, and we're just drawing, again, we're just drawing lines on a map. Right. right at this moment. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there may, there's plenty of opportunity for review down the road. I think the impacts on neighbors and the impacts downstream are the, one, are the, are the issues. And that's really when, that's site plan. You guys will review that under site plan. And that's when I it would guarantee you guys will hold a public hearing for site, right. Right. site right. development. And it's almost arguable yeah. that smaller lots would almost re reduce the chance that something big goes in there. Right. Unless someone buys them all. Huh? Right. <laughs> and it reverts. <laughs> yeah. Right. In which case, we're back to where we're at right now. Correct. It's the same. Yeah. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Well, I will right. say that this project has had some serious vetting. <laughs> <sighs> I think, I don't think it's not been on the planning board, with the exception of Fox Hill. I don't think there's been anyone that's had any more attention given to it. <laughs> Based on that. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Did we, did we so there was a motion, and it was seconded, and then there were four votes in favor, and then Richard stopped everything when he, when he made some yeah. comments. So that's style. That's, I know it's your yeah. style. That's a good style. I have no problem so with it. So, you, Richard. So, are you abstaining or saying no? Are you abstaining or saying no or yay? Wait a minute, everybody said yes, didn't they? Yeah, we they? did say yes, apart you. from you. So yes. why don't we take the vote over? All right, yes. we got a yes. All right, yes. so five. that's five to five, five to no. Okay, great. All right. Um, I think we can just um, close the meeting. Someone make a motion to close the meeting, and we'll see each other on July 18th, unless something else comes up. Okay, okay. motion to close the meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. aye. All right, there we go. That's an easy one. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Time it is. Kind of six. Isn't that when you're supposed to buy everybody a beer? No, that's not supposed to buy me a beer. Oh, Jeff's not here. That's why we end early because he didn't drag a meeting.